Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Deglo Buffalo and this is Let's Play The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. When we last left off, we were in the dark. So, let's see if we can do anything. Dark. You can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, and you're not even certain who you are. Okay. Let's try going north. You can't hear anything, see anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. And you don't even know where you are and who you are or how you got there. Okay. Here we go somewhere else. There's nothing you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell. You do not even know who you are. This is getting kind of repetitive. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing, and are not entirely certain who you are. Wait a second. Suddenly there's a sense missing. So we have see, we have sight, we have feeling, we have... We can hear and we can taste. But there was no smell, so let's see if we can smell anything. Smell darkness. It does smell a bit. There's something pungent being waved under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You can make out a shadow moving in the dark. Okay, let's look at shadow. This is a squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. The door lies port, and in an airlock lies starboard. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case contains an atomic vector plotter. Along the wall is a tall dispensing machine. Ford removes the bottle of Centriginian mineral water, which he's been waving under your nose. He tells you that you're about a Vogan spaceship and gives you some peanuts. Okay, so let, let's eat the peanuts. You feel stronger as the peanuts replace some of the protein you lost in the matter transference beam. That's something positive. So, okay, what can we do? Let's look at glass case. The glass case is closed. Attached to it are a keyboard and a switch. Let's try pressing the switch. A recording plays gibberish. Okay, that's not good. Let's look at... Dispens is it dispensing or dispenser machine? No, it's probably dispensing. Look at... Dispensing machine. Ah, dispenser with an E. It's me who can't spell. It's not the game that's the problem. The dispenser is tall and has a button around eye level and says Babelfish in large letters. Anything dispensed would probably come out the slot at around knee level. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Fair enough. So... Why not just press button? Which button do you mean? The dispenser button, the green button, or the red button? Well, the dis... Dispenser. A single babelfish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room and through a small hole in the wall just under a metal hook. Ford yawns. Meta transference always tires me out. I'm going to take a nap. He places something on top of a satchel. If you have any questions, here's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, footnote 14. Ford lowers his voice to a whisper. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but you'll never be able to finish the game without consulting the guide about lots of stuff. As he curls up in a corner and begins snoring, you pick up the Hitchhiker's Guide. Well, he's certainly right about that. So let's see. Let's start by consult guide about Babelfish. The guide checks through its sub-ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry. A mind-bogglingly improbable creature. A Babelfish, when placed in one's ear, allows one to understand any language. It is, of course, well known that careless talk costs lives. 
but the full scale of the problem is not always appreciated. For instance, at the exact moment you said, look at the Spensor machine, a freak wormhole opened in the fabric of the space-time continuum and carried your words far, far back in time across almost infinite reaches of space to a distant galaxy where strange and warlike beings were poised on the brink of frightful interstellar battle. The two opposing leaders were meeting for the last time. A dreadful silence fell across the conference table as the commander of the Vril Hergs, resplendent in his black jeweled battle shorts, gazed levelly at the Gugugvent leader squatting opposite him in a cloud of green sweet-smelling steam. As a million sleek and horribly beweaponed star cruisers poised to unleash electric death at his single word of command, the Vulherg challenged his vile enemy to take back what he had just said about his mother. The creature stirred in its sickly broiling vapor, and at that very moment the words look at the Spensor machine drifted across the conference table. Unfortunately, in the Vulherg tongue, this was the most dreadful insult imaginable, and there was nothing for it but to wage terrible war for centuries. Eventually, the error was detected, but over 250,000 worlds, their peoples and cultures perished in the Holocaust. You have destroyed most of a small galaxy. Please pick your words with greater care. Yikes. Anyway, so uh, we now found out that the Babelfish is actually fairly useful if stuck in our ear. And that um, when we press the dispenser button, it just sails across the room and through a hole under a hook. Now what we can do is take off our gown. Take off, not take odd. Take off gown and hang gown. from hook. So we're not we're no longer wearing our gown and the gown is hanging from the hook, covering a tiny hole. So let's press the dispenser button. Oh man. Dispenser a single babel fish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room and hits the dressing gown. The fish slides down the sleeve of the gown and falls to the floor, vanishing through the grating of a hitherto unnoticed drain. Very nice not telling me these things. So let's cover drain with towel. The towel completely covers the drain. Press the Spencer button. A single babelfish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room and hits the dressing gown. The fish slides down the sleeve of the gown and falls to the floor, landing on the towel. A split second later, a tiny cleaning robot whizzes across the floor, grabs the fish, and continues its breakneck pace towards a tiny robot panel at the base of the wall. The robot zips through the panel and is gone. Okay, so we need to find something to block the panel with. Let's see, we don't really have anything very useful for that. So let's take the satchel. Can we open the satchel and see what's inside? You can't, it's not yours, it's Ford's and it's private. Okay, put satchel in front of panel. Front. Okay, the satchel is lying on its side in front of the tiny robot panel. Press this Spencer button. Single Babelfish, blah, 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 blah. We've all seen this. A tiny robot, breakneck pace. The robot plows into the satchel, sending the Babelfish flying through the air in a graceful arc. A small upper half of the room cleaning robot flies into the room, catches the Babelfish, which is all the flying junk it can find and exits. Okay. So do we have any junk for that robot to be distracted by? Of course we do. We have a pile of junk mail. So let's put mail on satchel. Okay, the loose pile of junk mail is now sitting on the satchel. An announcement is coming over the ship's intercom. Blah, 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 gibberish. So let's press the dispenser button again. 
So we've seen most of this. The robot plows into uh, the robot plows into the satchel, sending the babelfish flying through the air in a graceful arc, surrounded by a cloud of junk mail. Another robot flies in and begins madly collecting the clutter plume of mail. The babelfish continues its flight, landing with a loud squish in your ear. So that's accomplished in the worst way possible. An announcement is coming over the ship's intercom. This is the captain. My instruments say we've picked up a couple of hitchhikers. I hate freeloaders, and when my guards find you, I'll have you thrown into space. On second thought, maybe I'll read you some of my poetry first. Repeating. Okay. Let's take all again. And the announcement is the same we already had. Let's put the gown on again. And now that we can actually understand the gibberish, let's press the switch. A recording place. To open the case, type in the third word from the second verse of the captain's current favorite poem. Warning, an incorrect input will cause the case to explode. So the third word from the second verse, that is important. Guards burst in and grab you and Ford, who come slowly awake. They drag you down the corridor to a large cabin, where they strap you into large, menacing chairs. Captain's quarters in poetry appreciation chairs. This is the cabin of the Vogan captain. You and Ford are strapped into poetry appreciation chairs. The captain is indescribably hideous, indescribably blubbery, and indescribably mid to dark green. He's holding samples of his favorite poetry. Okay. While we're at it, let's consult the guide on Vogan poetry. The guide checks through its sub-ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry. Vogan poetry is so awful that even the sarcopsy of Burfan 7, no 12, whose religion strictly forbids the taking of one's life, considers suicide a preferable alternative to Vogan poetry reading. Hmm. While we're at it, why don't we consult the guides on the Vogans. The guide checks through its sub ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry. Vogans, whose specialities are bureaucracy and planet smashing, are the most unpleasant race in the galaxy. They wouldn't think twice about throwing someone into space and wouldn't lift a finger to save their own grandmother from the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll. Also, see the entries on Vogan poetry and the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll. If he's going to read us his poetry, mutters Ford, sweating profusely. Just pray he softens us up with some cudgels first. Hello, hitchhikers, begins the Vogan captain. I've decided to read you a verse of my poetry. Just one verse, but we need the second verse. Ask captain for second verse. One of the guards lightly bashes your skull with the butt of his weapon. This is the poetry appreciation session, prisoner. No talking. Oh, freddled grunt bugly, thy nectarations are to me. Okay. As plural gobble blotchets on a lurgid bee. Well, how can we get the captain to read us his second verse? Because the first verse is of no use to us. Let's try this. Enjoy poetry. You realize that, although the Vogan poetry is indeed astoundingly bad, worse things happen at sea, and in fact, at school. With an effort for which Hercules himself would have patted you on the back, you grit your teeth and enjoy the stuff. Group, I implore thee, my funting turling drones. Right? And hoopteously drangle me with crinkly bindle wardles, or I will rend thee in the gobble woods with my blurgle crunching. See if I don't. I actually, as a kid, memorized this poem for no apparent reason. Fair enough. So, hey, why not enjoy poetry some more? Hey, let's not overdo it, okay? You looked like you enjoyed my poem. I think, yes, I think I'll read the next verse also. Very good, the second verse. So if I remember correctly, we needed the third word of the second verse. So let's see. Geshi morphosite, thou expungiest kupisk. Thou, okay. 
I have to remember thou. Bleem miserable venchet. Bleem forever. Mest English asunder frapped. Fripping licious whim guns. A wildst mongrovenly corm bits. Uh, no, corm zips. Jurand with altitude form into formless ploit. Why not then? Moose. Okay. I just read a whole bunch of uh, gibberish. I hope you're happy with me. Fair enough. Let's wait some more. Time passes. Since you have somehow managed to survive two verses of my poetry, I have no choice but, but to space you. Guards! Guard grabs you in Ford and drags you toward the hold. Ford whispers, don't worry, I'll think of something. Vogan hold. This is a squalid room, we have already seen this. Yes, this is all the same as before. The guard releases you and Ford and begins cycling the air in the airlock. Hey guard, shouts Ford. Do you really enjoy this sort of thing? Shouting, stomping around, shooting people? Is it really a fulfilling career? Well, while we're at it, let's press the switch. So to open the case, type in the third word from the second verse. And, uh... Ford continues trying to talk uh, the guard into sudden career change. Okay, now this took me forever to figure out. I had to figure out when I was a kid, so I knew what to do. Because, as I said, I, I played this game when I was a kid. But actually getting this game to type the word onto the keyboard is near impossible. Like, the obvious thing would be type thou on keyboard, or enter thou on keyboard, something like that. None of that worked, and I went crazy trying to figure it out. In the end, it was easy, but not that easy. Type, not input, type thou, like this, in quotation marks. So it took me forever to figure out that I had to use quotation marks. But anyway, the glass case opens. Take plotter. Okay, so let's save. We can save it with the, the other save game. And I think I'm going to end the video here, so for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.